Hello YouTube, this is Jay here and this is going to be part 4 in my series of uh, explaining light for planet tanks. In this part, I'll be discussing PAR. I know a lot of you guys are going to get excited because everybody loves PAR. Uh, PAR is uh, an abbreviation for photosynthetically active radiation. Its unit is micromole photons per meter squared per second. So PAR is um, how many photons are hitting a one square meter area, so it's an area that's one meter by one meter, how many in terms of number of photons is hitting this a surface per second. So um, uh, moles is a large number, so a certain number of photons hitting the surface per second is the PAR value. So that is um, the unit that is used to measure a photosynthetically active radiation. Um, sunlight is around 2000 PAR and sunlight is composed of a variety of wavelengths and if you just take the uh, visible light that is 400 to 700 nanometers and uh, this amount of light hitting a certain surface per second that is about uh, 2000 micromoles of uh, photons. Um, PAR, uh, people just talk about PAR as if everything is equal but there are actually two different types of PAR um, a lot of people don't know this um, there's PPFD and YPFD PPFD is a uh, abbreviation for photosynthetic photon flux, YPFD is yield photon flux, and the difference is uh, how it's measured. So PPFD, um, it actually doesn't put any emphasis on the wavelength of photons itself. So red photon, blue photon, green photon, as long as it's a visible light, um, PPFD doesn't care. So PPFD will all consider all photons equal. Green photon is the same as a red photon. Whereas a YPFD, um, if you remember my previous parts, I discussed that uh, there is a yield a photon curve. So uh, this is the yield photon curve right here. So green light is slightly less than red light and blue light. So red and blue light have slightly more um, activation of photosynthesis in study in uh, isolated leaves. So yield photon flux it will consider a green photon slightly less than a red photon. So it will consider that. It will uh, uh, discriminate between different wavelengths. Uh, most PR measurements actually use uh, PPFD. They don't really uh, weight photons differently. So usually if you see a PR value, it's PPFD. Now PAR, just like uh, I've discussed in terms of light intensity over distance, it decreases over distance. All light decreases in terms of intensity over distance, um, so PAR is no different. So uh, there is no exact like you need this much PAR to grow plants. This is just like uh, a general consensus that is derived over years of anecdotal experience. Um, low PAR is like something around 30, medium is around 30 to 60, high is about like greater than 60. Depending on who you ask, uh, they will give you different numbers, but this is approximately like how much PR is considered uh, high, medium, or low. So as long as you're something around 50 PAR, you should usually be fine. And uh, of course, light decreases over distance, so um, you should uh, measure out where you're, how you're going to set up the tank and about the depth of your substrate that you're going to have, and you're going to measure that distance from the light source to the bottom of the tank and you should check if the PAR at that level is um, somewhere around 50. And uh, if you look at PAR values that people give out, they will either give you like a curve like this, so it'll give you a distance at like, at like uh, 20 inches, the PAR is 40 or something. So they'll give you a different value and at like uh, 6 inches, it's like 80. They'll give you like a different number, like they'll give you a curve like this or they'll give you a chart of uh, different numbers. So if you look up the PAR of a light bulb, um, you will be able to figure out whether this light bulb will be sufficient to grow plants. Now although PAR is considered like the gold standard of whether a light is worthy to grow plants, it does have its limitations. Um, PAR meters are used to measure the PAR. There are these devices that you can use um, to measure the PAR level and uh, they don't uh, exactly work as uh, the theory works. So an ideal PR meter, uh, if you have something between 700 and 700 nanometers, it should measure um, all photons equally within the shape. So red, green, blue, uh, purple, whatever, it should measure everything that's in there. But 
Um, if you take the actual curve of a PR meter, it'll look something different. Like this is an example, it'll look something a bit lopsided like this, and it'll not pick up the red photons very well, um, and it will not weigh them equally. So actual PR meters, because they're devices, and depending on how expensive and good of a PR, PR meter you have, they won't pick up um, certain wavelengths as effectively as other wavelengths. So um, if you say you have a light that is has a lot of red in it, uh, if you measure it with this PR meter, it's not going to pick up that red light very well because just the limitations of the device itself. So you can have the exact same light and you can have uh, different PR meters and they can give you quite differing uh, measurements depending on uh, the spectrum of the light and how the PR meter actually picks up the light. So depending on the PR meter, um, the level can be quite different. Um, that has to be taken into consideration. And... Uh, Another thing to consider is that some PR measurements that you uh, see online, um, they are measured just with uh, out water. So having water in the tank can make a big difference. Um, this is the absorption of water. So water um, will absorb blue light, um, uh, actually red light, much better than blue light. So blue light would penetrate deeper into water, whereas red light will get absorbed. So if you have water, um, uh, that can affect the PR value. Um, and also the, another way that water can affect PR value is because of a reflect a reflection. Um, if you have a full tank versus an empty tank, an empty tank the lights gonna <coughs> bleed out to outside the tank. <coughs> Whereas um, if you have the tank filled up, some of the light will reflect in. So um, the light intensity at the middle of the tank will be quite different compared to um, the edges here. So if you have a PR measurement that's taken right at the middle, it'll be much brighter than at the corner. So that is another thing that you have to consider. Another thing you have to consider when uh, using PAR is uh, CO2 levels <clears throat> actually matter. So uh, if you say uh, lights, <clears throat> you have certain light intensity and as light intensity increases, so will photosynthesis. So light intensity increases, and the photosynthesis will increase, and eventually um, it's going to plateau because there's a maximum level of a photosynthesis that a plant can do. But the CO2 level will also affect this, so this curve will look different depending on CO2. So if you have a low CO2 tank, the curve will look something like this, and if you have a high CO2 tank, the curve will look something like this. So um, if you have high CO2, even though you have the exact same amount of light going in, your plants will grow better. So CO2 also will uh, affect the results. And if you have a high CO2 tank, you can get away with a lower PAR lamp because um, the threshold required to actually active photosynthesis goes, low, uh, goes down. So um, that can also have an effect on whether the PAR of your tank will be sufficient. So to summarize um, everything that I discussed, um, Light bulb of choice, you can go with um, a variety of light bulbs, but as far as the current technology is, LED uh, pretty much trumps other light bulbs. Um, metal halide and fluorescent may have some roles, but uh, usually LEDs are just better. Um, point two is that are 30 lumens per liter. Um, it's an estimation that you can do. If you're not really obsessed about getting an optimal light and you just want to know what works, then maybe you can apply it. As long as you understand its limitations, uh, you can go with 30 lumens per liter. Uh, white light uh, spectrum is discussed a lot, but in the end, um, it doesn't matter as much as people uh, think it is. So uh, as long as it's white, plants will grow. If you have a uh, much wider and better spectrum, you may have better results and the tank may look better. But if it looks white, plants will grow, uh, plants will figure it out. Um, they will uh, use the plant, use the light that you give them and they will grow. And finally, we get to the PAR, and you have to uh, figure out what the PAR value is of the light bulb. Uh, if you go online, um, because uh, there are a lot of other people who have PAR meters, they have taken measurements of different light bulbs, and they, uh, you can, uh, as long as it's a pretty common light bulb, uh, a lot of the PAR values have been uh, figured out, so you will be able to find it online. Um, so if you have a PR above 50 that at the bottom of the substrate, you should be fine. So that is a summary of uh, the previous parts. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.